We are in a vineyard with very old wines, vines of Pais, which are very tall. I see them quite tall, which, as you mentioned before, is to avoid frost. Right. The ancient people in general would raise the vineyards because every year there are more frosts. Here, we have this vineyard and a vineyard down there. We harvest every two years. The rest is frosted. There is always ice, and one of the solutions is raising the vineyard. That's why there are vineyards here that are 1 meter tall, 1.20 meters, 1.30 and 1.50 meters even. The variety has so much strength, so much support, that it doesn't matter if it's a meter and half tall, because it is capable of holding the kilos of grapes it has. I suppose that this is more important in the lower parts due to frost. In the lower parts, it is necessary to lift, yes, but even if one lifts them 50 centimeters, it's not the same here as down there. Down there, there is a 15 meter difference, and the cold air moves very quickly towards the lower parts. We are in a vineyard with very old wines, vines of Pais, which are very tall. I see them quite tall, which, as you mentioned before, is to avoid frost. Right. The ancient people in general would raise the vineyards because every year there are more frosts. Here, we have this vineyard and a vineyard down there. We harvest every two years. The rest is frosted. There is always ice, and one of the solutions is raising the vineyard. That's why there are vineyards here that are 1 meter tall, 1.20 meters, 1.30 and 1.50 meters even. The variety has so much strength, so much support, that it doesn't matter if it's a meter and half tall, because it is capable of holding the kilos of grapes it has. I suppose that this is more important in the lower parts due to frost. In the lower parts, it is necessary to lift, yes, but even if one lifts them 50 centimeters, it's not the same here as down there. Down there, there is a 15 meter difference, and the cold air moves very quickly towards the lower parts. The Pays arrived with you, with the Spaniards who arrived here several centuries ago. This is a border area. There were many soldiers here. Therefore, the soldier needs wine. Wine was nutritious that the soldiers would drink, and there is a lot of vineyards that are associated with that since four or five centuries ago. These vines are probably about 100, 120, 130 years old. They have been regenerating and renewing themselves, but the vineyard is very old. The main variety is Pays, and secondly Moscatel, but far away. Also, a little bit of Malbec. Malbec has also been here for a while, right? Malbec has been around for 160 or 180 years. I don't recall the exact time, but it arrived in the middle of the 18th century, and the government brought it to improve the color of Pays. And now you're vinifying it alone. We vinify it separately, because for me it doesn't make sense, because Pays has its own rusticity and authenticity, and that's its own color that it has. We do Malbec apart from the rest as well. The first reason is because we want to make the Pays wines 100% from Pays grapes. Each wine is 100%. The Malbec matures much earlier, 20, 30 days before the Pays. Mauricio, within your winery, which you have built yourself like the ones built in the old days, which is with Mar, well, can you explain it to me? Well, this is a winery that is already three years old. We built it with local people, and of course, it's mud that we recycle from old wineries that collapse due to the earthquakes that occur continuously. These are the adobe bricks. Right, and we reactivated the bricks. We added straw, a bit of sand, and wood, which are the materials that are most available here. Soil, clay, straw and mud, and tiles too. Then the clay tiles in the roof that are also recovered. Yes, we also recovered them, but I don't know how old they are. I'm sure they're very old, and they're all different. It was very difficult to make the roof but the tiles are part of this place. These materials help you maintain a cold temperature even during summers, right? Yes, the main thing was to make a winery that had tile on the roof. That's because the tile insulates the heat a lot. The wood and clay was also added to help cooling, and that coincided with the fact that all the old wineries here are 10 by 20 square meters, made of tiles and clay. 
Hey, one thing that really attracts me about this winery, even the one of Ricardo that we visited before, is that you are very traditional when it comes to the production. You use large lagars made out of this local wood. You also use clay jars too. And I see some concrete deposits there too. Why do you use this instead of stainless steel tanks to control the temperature? Well, the idea is to make wine while respecting the old ways. It is very difficult because jars are no longer made. It took us 10 years to put together the jars that are here. The Raleigh wood is also no longer made. All these deposits, laggers, barrels, that used to be done with Raleigh, because Raleigh cannot be used anymore. It is a protected species in Chile. So what we do is recover, or find a winery that can sell or gift us stuff like this, because this is how wine was made back then. But that doesn't mean that you make bad wine, you still have temperature control. That's correct. If you ask me, I'd like to use only Raleigh and clay jars, but it is not possible, because they are not easy to find. Find a Raleigh lager like the one we have here, with capacity for more than 3,000 liters is impossible. There are no more. Plus, the master artisans doing this are not here anymore. For example, last year Angoyo Figa passed away. He was the main master at repairing these deposits, and now there is no one left. Right, these are hard to maintain. Out of the ones you made, which are the ones you focused on the most? Obviously Pais, but what else? There are three different Pais wines of different soils and vineyards. The most important one for us is the Pipeño, which is the wine fermented in the Raleigh Lager. Raleigh is a native species in Chile, and we store it in a barrel called Pipa, which is made of Raleigh as well. So it is an ultra-Chilean wine. It represents the wine that people drink in the countryside. This is the wine that is hardest to make, but the one we make the most of, because it represents the wine culture here. Is this sold in pipas? No. Unfortunately, we don't have enough pipas for the quantity of wine that we produce. One part goes in pipa, and the other into stainless steel. Okay, and uh, what else do you make? Well, we make two more Pays wines that are from different soils. They all ferment in Raleigh lagers, some age in concrete, some in steel tanks and Moscatel, which is the other variety that is very important here. In Bio Bio, Pays is the king, and in second place is Moscatel, which is a white variety. We originally tried to make it in Raleigh with aging in concrete, but the best result was fermenting and aging in clay jars. Then you bottle it. Right, we take it out, bring together all the jars. Normally not all of them work. There are some wines that go bad just because they are jars that are over 100 years old. Then they are gathered in a large vessel, a blend is made, and it's left there for a few days to settle and be cleaned. Generally we do not apply sulfur, but there are seasons that you have to. Last year we didn't. This season I don't know yet. Two seasons ago we did add it in the blend, before bottling, and that's it. Right, because your wines are natural. That is, more than talking about the word natural, for me it feels like everyone says they make natural wine. So for me, the most important thing is that we make traditional Chilean wine old wine from the field. <laughs>